At the northeast corner of New England, quietly nestled between the provinces of Quebec and New Brunswick, sits one of America's true sporting gems, the great state of Maine. Hello everyone, I'm Rob Heal, and this week we're in the Katahdin region of northern Maine. I got nothing to say, nothing bad to say about these fish. We're going to be chasing brook trout, landlocked salmon, and smallmouth bass on a variety of water. We had more options to choose from than we could dream of, as this region is abundant with lakes and rivers. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Maine Office of Tourism, Orvis Fly Fishing, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada. Rich in sporting history, you can't talk about hunting and fishing in America without Maine coming into the conversation, and Mainers take their outdoor sports seriously. With three dozen state parks and eight substantial wildlife refuges, these natural and renewable resources are among the top revenue generating tourism products in the area. One of our guides this week is Bryant Davis of Maine Quest Adventures. Bryant met us in the morning, and after a quick overview of the day's plans, we headed out for Baxter State Park, our first destination. The morning greeted us with near perfect conditions. The wind was down, leaving the lake glassy calm, and the odd sporadic rise gave us hope of maybe seeing a hatch. Yeah, that usually that uh, color mayfly right there is an early season one. It didn't take us long to find trout as we probed the shoreline with a local pattern. The bugs were reluctant, and although fish continued to rise occasionally, they never really got into enough of a rhythm to make us consider switching to a dry fly. We let the trout dictate our presentation. The first pond, while fruitful, produced only smaller trout, so we made the call to paddle across the lake and pick up a portage into the next, where Brian assured us we would find larger trout. <laughs> yeah, it's a little better fish for sure. Good. Nice fish. There. Nice fish. Good. Uh, either whatever you want to do here, okay? Yep. Here. Come here, big fella. This is hard, but I'll try and try and get him right back to you. There you go. Nice. He's nice. As, he's as he's as big as the uh, one you caught over there. Good, good, uh, good call. Just slid across the lake to a new spot, and there's another fish just rose right here somewhere. Handy. There he goes, nice, nice. A wise angler once said, trout don't live in ugly places. And that statement's been pretty spot on for me thus far. There is something truly special and rewarding about wild brook trout. And the North Main woods was no exception. As much as I appreciate the nuances of still waters, I was dying to get back on a river, and the next morning, we set off to fish the west branch of the Penobscot. Like too many rivers in the continent, 
the Penobscot has suffered over the past hundred years with damming and industrialization. However, the state of Maine has invested an enormous amount of time and money to repair the damage done due to poor science, and the river has come back. It's clear, clean water, abundant mayfly, caddis, and stonefly hatches, naturally reproducing brook trout, and landlocked salmon are a true and irrefutable testament to those efforts. The weather on this day did a complete 180 and pounded us with heavy winds and a 25 degree drop in temperature. I knew from the start that it would be tough with these conditions, but nevertheless, I was excited and optimistic. We're dealing with a pretty tough downstream wind here right now. Um, and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to just talk about that for a second. When you're dealing with a big wind, we're, we're in, that, in that 15, probably gusting to 20 miles an hour. And, but there's a couple of things that you can do to deal with that. Now, I'm a right-handed caster. So for me, this is actually a very easy wind to deal with. I can, I can actually use the wind to my advantage to keep my fly ahead of my line, even at, even at longer distances. But if I was left-handed, or on the other side of the river, I, I'm not gonna to wanna to make that cast over my left shoulder because it's, I'm gonna run the risk of that fly coming back and, and getting caught up in, in my body anywhere. So as a lefty, I can, make, I can do one of two things. If I'm, if I'm casting a short line, I can keep the fly rod over my right shoulder and still make a decent presentation. Or if it was really bad, or if I was casting a heavily weighted rig, such as an indicator rig or a sinking tip, I can actually turn my body and cast naturally into the wind and then deliver my back cast. So those are two helpful tricks when, when you're dealing with especially strong and gusty winds. Now I'm gonna try and catch fish. Being versatile, particularly when conditions are tough, is vital to your outcome. We've gone through this pool with a dry fly. We haven't seen uh, a lot of fish rising, uh, but we did give it its due. Now I've switched to an indicator. We're seeing a mixture of caddis and mayflies coming off. So I've set up my indicator rig with, with a caddis emerger and a mayfly nymph. Uh, that's, that's appropriate to the size and color that we're seeing. Now, when I work a run with a nymph and indicator, I wanna try and get to the point where I'm setting the hook on every fifth or sixth cast. With the leader that I just had, I don't think I was deep enough, so I've actually lengthened my leader. Now I can make adjustments to my indicator and my weight to get to that setting the hook on every fifth or sixth cast formula which tells me I'm near the bottom and in the zone. I got a, I got a ridiculously long leader on here. It doesn't need to be this long, but it's just the way it worked out. Any angler will be far more successful when they become efficient with dry flies, nymphs, and streamer presentations. I've had good luck on a not real small, but not a, a big streamer. When trout fishing, remember this, trout and rivers will feed almost perpetually, but there will always be periods of low activity mixed in. Finding the right presentation during these periods may take some time, but the end result will be rewarding. There's a fish. It didn't hit hard. Could be a, could be a fall fish, not a big fish. Because it's if, small. If, if it's probably a fall fish. Okay. It's fighting like a... Yeah. It is. Oh. It's a salmon. Is it a little salmon? Yeah. Looks it is like too. It. Yeah. He hasn't jumped. I'm surprised. Yeah, that's a little salmon. Yeah. Well, there you go. My first Kennebec ouch, or my first Penobscot River salmon. Not a big salmon, but it's a landlocked salmon. We stuck it out in this open section and dealt with the wind as best we could. But the cold front clearly had the fish uncooperative. Bryant made the call to move to another sector for lunch, hopefully to find some cover from the weather. 
Everything tastes better in the woods, and Bryant's lunch was no exception. Maine guides pride themselves on their skill, breadth of knowledge, and professionalism, and that shows in everything they do. I've been guiding for almost 20 years. What I do in the Katahdin region is guide fishermen throughout the northern Maine Katahdin region on waters such as behind us here, the, the west branch of Penobscot River. Uh, I also guide in, in around the lakes and ponds in the area for bass, brook trout, salmon, predominantly them three species. I think the draw to the Katahdin region is its natural beauty. It's uh, well kept, I guess, or unspoiled. You've got a lot of uh, natural areas like this river here behind me. You've got uh, Baxter State Park, which is a 200 and something odd acre uh, state park. So you have hiking, biking, s snowmobiling, fishing, just all of the outdoor pursuits people are looking for is right here in this area. This river uh, has a lot to offer. Uh, as this spot right here, you can see, it's not very deep, it's very easily weighted. Uh, so beginners can, with a guide, can come out here and, and not worry about you know, getting hurt or drowned. Uh, it's easy, easily accessible. So this, this river has a lot of diversity in that sense. Is you can fish pools, you can fish riffles, you can fish flat spots, or right below some waterfalls where it pulls up. It does have a lot of diversity. We did manage to find some relief from the wind and fished a spectacular piece of water after lunch. But despite our best efforts, we managed only a couple of brief encounters. Oh, I just had a swirl. I just had a good swirl. Good swirl. Just like a friggin' Atlantic. Big swirl. As soon as I started to speed it up. There's a fish. Ah! The decent fish. But from a guy that loves to fish the big water, the Penobscot has it all. My only regret was not having more time to play. Our home away from home on this trip was the New England Outdoor Center. Located on Millinocket Lake and just a 15 minute drive to the town of Millinocket, NEOC is a modern and wonderfully appointed facility, offering, along with guided fishing tours, a variety of accommodations from small, single family cabins to premium lodges. They also offer canoe and kayak and mountain bike rentals to augment your stay or keep the non-anglers in your group busy while you're off on the water. The facility boasts a wonderfully appointed gift shop and an outstanding restaurant and bar with friendly, professional staff and a terrific menu. Our next fishing spot was literally across the road from NEOC and we met Dan Hillier from Maine Guides Unlimited the next morning to get after some smallmouth bass on the Big Lake Pema Dumcook. After a couple of days of fishing the big rivers and some of the small back ponds, we're now on the Big Lake. We're gonna be targeting smallmouth bass with varying patterns such as these game changers. I gotta tell you, it's a joy being in the boat. This is a, uh, this is a boat that's designed for fishing and after sitting in canoes and waiting on, on fairly tough water for the past couple of days, this is gonna be a pleasant day. So on the bow of my boat, I've got the uh, Minn Kota Altera. Uh, it's, a, it has, it's a smart trolling motor. Um, in my hand, I have my remote, which is wirelessly connected to it. Uh, it's allowing us to uh, move the boat in and out of the strike zone, so that way Rob, he can get his best cast right where that drop-off is and where the smallies are hanging out today. Um, it has the spot lock function, which is basically like a virtual anchor. Uh, so if it's, the wind's blowing, you don't want to do a drift, you can spot lock and it, the boat will stay, take a GPS point and it'll stay right in that spot. And it's really critical as a guide to, for this equipment to help, help me keep my clients on fish. 
You never know what Mayweather can send you on a big lake. But today, we were blessed with high sun and very little wind. And we didn't make many casts before Pema Dumcook showed us fish. There, I strip said that. <laughs> you know, uh, I can't, I can't stress enough. I was fishing a, I was fishing a, a, a game changer and a fairly substantial game changer. And Dan said, "We'll give it a couple more casts," and he wasn't feeling it, so he went to one of his go-to flies. Trust your guide. Trust your guide, even. Even all of the stuff that you do on your home water, um, nice. All the stuff that you do in your home water doesn't always prevail on new water. That's a good start. That's not a. It's not a huge, huge bass, but we're on the board. There's another one. Jeez. Two cast, two fish. Little little fella, I can get him. Yeah. Yeah, we just we just swing him around here. Yeah, that's right. Swing bass. Swing bass. Paul W's got nothing on us. That is that is cool though. That change change that fly. Two cast, two fish. Yeah. I'll stick with Dan Hillier. I'll do that all day long. At lunch, we had a chance to talk to Dan about his guiding and what Maine Guides Unlimited was all about. My business is Maine Guides Unlimited. It's a co-op of guides that uh, have been vetted through us so that we can give people a more of a rounded base of guided activities such as hunting, fishing, recreating, anything like that. What draws people to Maine, especially in the, in the fishing industry, is its diverse realm of fish. There are all different species that are great for all different levels of anglers. Landlocked salmon, they can enjoy brook trout fishing. Uh, we have some of the last stronghold of the eastern brook trout, native eastern brook trout in the United States. That was a fish, that was a fish. I just saw it, I saw it turn, I saw it go away. There he is. Nice. Oh, oh yeah. Better fish, too. A little better fish. That might be the... Oh, another, it's another, another one, one right following it. it. There's another one following it. Still following it? Oh, shoot. Jeez. Robbie. Bigger, the bigger they get, the softer their mouths are or something. I don't know, or I'm just a lousy angler. When fishing lakes for smallmouth bass, particularly during transition periods, knowing what to look for in terms of water temperature, structure, and depth will greatly increase your odds of quality hookups. Electronics are a bonus, but if you are fishing without, carry a thermometer and wear a good pair of polarized sunglasses. We worked the shoreline, reacting to what the fish finder was telling us and casting to likely looking targets, hooking a good number of fish. Yeah, you were you were bang on that one, bang on that one. Dan just said he, he marked some fish off to the off to the left and said and, and asked me to throw it out and uh, and um, let it sink. And I just crawled it back with a with a super slow finger crawl, and we got a fish. Again, not a not a huge fish, but it was a good call. Yep, you were right. <laughs> he fished this shoreline before. <laughs> God, you know, I uh, I love all kinds of fish, but I, I love smallmouth bass. Bass, even these cold water, even these cold water smallies are, get them? Mm, dang deep. There we go. 
came off of that. Well done. Knowing that smallies, when gearing up for the spawn, really dig a consistent water temperature of 60 degrees plus, we made a number of moves to find this temperature and looked for shorelines with the longest daily exposure to the sun. That feels like a good fish. Ah, still, you know, but by God, they, they, they like sure pull hard right off the hop. You know, he's fighting a, a six weight rod and a sinking tip and they still, they still make an account of themselves. Yeah. Ah, they're all good fish. They're all good fish. Well done. Nice. Fish! Ooh, that's a nice one. The end of the stuck and huge. They keep them stuck. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a good fish. Yeah, that's a good fish. That's, that's a... better than average. Yep. Yeah. So we may have to get them on the reel. Yep, yeah, that's a better fish. Uh oh. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> it's never a good sign. Jeez, that's a good hard fighting fish. Nothing wrong with that. I'll take them. Yeah. It's not like in the boat. Nice, good fish. Along with understanding fish behavior and where structure, temperature, and depth come into play, it's equally important to know what kind of retrieve you require to consistently take fish. I don't do a lot of still water and lake fishing, but one thing I've learned over the past few days of fishing in, uh, in, in still waters is your connection to your fly is paramount. This line bouncing up and down and back and forth when I'm stripping is compromising your feel, whether I'm stripping the line like this or doing a little finger roll. That, that line that's, that's moving back and forth is compromising my feel dramatically. So it's important to keep as much of the fly line in the water, whether you're stripping or not, and stay connected to the fly. You'll immediately notice the difference. I've, I've had some, some subtle taps and I've been able to stay with the fish and I feel them. These fish are cold, right now they're cold water fish, so they're taking very tentatively. It's, a, it's paramount that you remain in contact with the fly. On this week's trip to Northern Maine, we used a variety of rods and matching reels from five weights to eight weights to meet the conditions on the various waters we fished. When casting dry flies and nymphing, we used nine foot five weight rods with a floating line and tapered leaders from three to five X. However, when casting the larger streamers, six and eight weight rods came into play with sink tip lines from 10 foot type three to 30 foot type three streamer lines. On the morning of our final day, we switched things up a bit and went after landlocked salmon at the mouth of the Penobscot where the river drains into Pema Dumcook. The river was beautiful and full of promise. And as I've mentioned before, I can't get enough of moving water. 
Uh, so Dan, w what are we doing here in this, uh, in this sort of slack but still moving water? It's got a very uniform current. Are we sort of swinging the fly with a, or a pseudo swing with a little strip kind of deal? Yeah, it's more of a, it's a, kind of a swing, letting the, your fly line take, swing your fly downstream a little bit but every once in a while to give it a good strip, but we don't need to do it fast, right. but just a quick strip and then let it pause and a quick strip. You really want to get down in the water column a little bit because we're in a little bit more water than what you typically fish in a river. Um, and that seems to be the, what the salmon are liking, that's for sure. So with this 10 foot uh, sink tip and a, and a reasonably short leader, I can introduce a little slack and just, and just get it sinking deeper um, and w w the water temperature is 50, it's only 59 degrees. So, you know, in theory, it's, it's bloody near perfect conditions for this kind of fishing, cold water fish. I mean, they're, they're, they're happy right now. We just saw fish porpoise down here, probably took a caddis. There's a few of them coming off. We'll keep an eye open on that. This is just glassy calm right here and love to get a, love to get a few fish in a rhythm and take yeah. one on a dry fly, but yeah, we'll we, take what we can get. We might, that might be an option. Switching things up makes sense when the going gets tough. So we did what we could with our presentations, but despite our best efforts, had no success coaxing one of these elusive salmon to take our fly. We made the obvious move at this point and found our way back to the smallies to see if they might be a little more forgiving. That's a fish. That's a little guy, but Still a nice, it's good, good cast right in, right in where he should have been. Exactly. Right in where he should have been. Oh, nice. They're jumping pretty good for this, this cold water. Again, overnight, down to 59 40. degrees. 60, right? Yeah. We're, we're and the, and the fishing has been. The bass fishing has been typically slow. We, we started out, tried for a landlocked salmon, and and uh, then moved back into an area we fished yesterday. We don't always have control over the size of the fish that we hook, but there's something to be said about consistent action. Fish. Just like you said yesterday, you said sometimes they'll, sometimes they'll fight to come off of there. Yeah. Or, or uh, like they'll they'll chase it coming off of there. That's decent. That's a decent fish too. Oh, Woo! Yeah, that is a good fish. Nice. That's a little nice. Fish. That's good bass. I cast it. I put it right up onto the yeah. onto the flat rock, and I think I think he was actually in it. Tucked right yeah. in between one of those, one of those uh, bigger bigger rocks. There we go. All right. He's staying down. Oh, there's another great big fish following him. Another great big fish following him. Oh yeah. See him? Look at that. The other one was bigger than that one. I think the other one was bigger than that one. All right, let's get him. All right. Well, that's all we have for you this week, and it would be tough to end a show on a higher note than that. We want to thank Dan and Bryant for helping us sort through some really tough conditions over the past few days. We also need to thank the crew at the New England Outdoor Center. Their facility is excellent. We highly recommend it. To learn more about this destination and others, visit us at thenewflyfisher.com. Until next time, be safe, and we'll see you on the water. The new Fly Fisher is supported by Maine Office of Tourism. 
Orvis fly fishing, scientific anglers, trout unlimited, WeatherTech Canada.